Speed. Well, welcome back to another video here. And in today's video, Brandon and I will be going over our last mock draft attempts for the Washington Commanders. After this, we're either going to be called by the Commanders to be a part of their front office or we'll be the laughing stocks. It, it could go either way. But uh, with that said, let's hit the intro. And, of course, this channel is dedicated to news and commentary for the Washington football commanders. If you're down with that, please consider subscribing to this channel and also hit that notification bell as well. Um, I'm your host, Greg Sykes, along with my co-host, Brandon Scott, who is also um, locked on Wizard. So I know that he has had such a fun time doing podcasts for the basketball team and he is even more happier that the season is over but anyway um, <laughs> um, in today's video uh, we're going to be going over our mock drafts now I have done a million of these things and that is not to say that I'm expert at doing mock drafts I think I just did them over and over again because you know I just wanted to see, honestly see <clears throat> different scenarios um, as it pertains to probably the first three rounds, honestly. Um, but uh, can you actually look at mine and say he knows exactly what he's doing? Eh, probably, probably not. Probably not. But hopefully I did get the quarterback right now. Keep in mind all of the mock drafts I've done, and I think I've even done some videos uh, in the past few weeks on other mock drafts I've done, and I shared those. Um, but you, you will probably have found that with all of the mock drafts I've done, the quarterback has changed. I mean, I've drafted any, anywhere from Daniels to May to um, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. So I'm spreading love, man. I mean, I'm looking at all situations. But I think this is going to be my last one. And we will see, Brandon, if I get this right. Um but I think before I go, I'm going to go ahead and let you go first, Brandon, because I think that once people hear your mock draft, they're probably going to laugh at mine. So um, some of the ones that you shared with me before the, the uh, video started, um, I'm kind of like, oh, why didn't I pick that guy? Uh, yes, that's exactly who we need. So Brandon, your last mock draft before Thursday night What's it going to look like, my man? All right, man. Um, Obviously, at number two with our first round pick, I went with Jaden Daniels. Now, I'm kind of with you, man. Uh, you know, every mock draft is different. You know, some was uh, Jaden Daniels, some were uh, Drake May. I think even one was J.J. McCarthy. So I kind of spread the wealth around a little bit. But uh, with the number two pick, I went with Jaden Daniels. Um, and like I said, we're going to talk about it a little bit about <laughs> the smoke and mirrors surrounding Jaden Daniels and whether or not he wants to be here. But according to my mock draft, he wants to be here. So I definitely went Jaden Daniels with the number two. On uh, the second round, I went tight end first. I went with – let me pull it up real quick because my computer acting funny. Uh, Jay Tavion Sanders, tight end out of Texas. 6'4", 245 pounds. I think he can come right in with his uh, pass catching ability and his blocking ability. He can come in and start, in my opinion. You know, he's got the intangibles. And if you look at the tight end room right now, we, you know, it's not, you know, we got uh, a veteran and some guys, man, but we don't have a clear cut number one. I think this kid could definitely be that guy. Uh, the second second round pick, I did go with Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Um, definitely, the, um, to me, the uh, future left tackle for this team. Uh, looking at the third round. Now, looking at the third round, I did pick a corner. I went TJ Tampa, and I got another tackle in the third round with uh, Rosen Garden. So, uh, you know, I got a left and right tackle in the draft, got a tight end, and I got a corner that I think can be, if developed right can be that guy. Uh, now, what, what you know, in the first three quarters, what did I miss out on? And I'm really <laughs> – I hated the fact that I did, but wide receiver because there's a lot of wide receivers in this draft that I like. So, uh, looking at my first three rounds, I try to go with need, but – you always miss one, and I, I missed out on the wide receiver. But tight end is is one position group that we have really haven't talked about a lot, as far as you know being a position to need. Obviously, corner, obviously wide receiver, you know quarterback, obviously. But tight end, man, and it, you know there's not as many tight end guys like there is other position groups. But if he's available, you got to roll with my man uh, out of Texas because, like I said, he's he's big, he's tall. You know, he can be a possession guy, but he can get up there and get those high balls. He can block, he can catch. So that's that's what I'm rolling with, Greg. Cool deal. And in other mock drafts, I drafted him as well. 
Um, I don't know. I had the opportunity. It was a weird thing. I had drafted a tight end, and he was still on the board. And I was like, wait a minute, I've drafted him before, but I don't know if I want to draft two tight ends in this draft. So I skipped him, and I think I, I actually did go wide receiver in that round. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so folks don't laugh at me too hard. But here is mine. I'm just going to put it up on the screen. Um, so I, as well, drafted Jaden Daniels for our number two pick. Um, I think he's the most likely, but then again, as, as Brandon and I will get into a little bit, um, there's so many smoke and mirrors, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but that's who I'm drafting, Jaden Daniels. And then, uh, like mine's with the offensive tackle, Jordan Morgan, um, because obviously we do need a tackle uh, badly. Um, at the 40th pick, I know that we've gotten some edge but I think you still need some younger guys in the rotation. So I want the Darius Robinson for the edge. Now, as I'm doing this draft, I am thinking, I'm like, okay, um, rest in peace, the uh, the draft prospect who, who passed away this week. But I, I hope that they took his name out of the draft because I can't always remember these names. And so I'm like, here, I, I think we should pick this guy. It's like, mm, too soon, Greg. But um uh, not trying to make light of it, folks. I'm just saying that, you know, um, it, it would just not be good taste for me to to draft that guy. But, um, okay, moving right along. Shut up, Greg. Um, moving right along. Uh, 67, I picked our tight end, Ben Snot. Um, and then 78, um, I felt we needed a wide receiver. And so I picked Jalen McMillan out of Washington. Um, you know, I mean, it, we need a wide receiver. I thought it was a good pick at that point. So I'm like, wide receiver it is. I went back and got another edge in Austin Booker from Kansas. Um, again, I just, I just feel like we, we really need to solidify those edges. Uh, in the past, we would have some pretty good guys in the middle, but you know, it seems like Without good pass rushes on the edge, uh, those guys tend to suffer. So um, being able to have good rotation, just you know, getting enough edges in there and having the, the cream of the crop rise up to see who's actually going to solidify those positions. Uh, but I like Austin Booker at 100. Um, I went up and picked up a corner at 151 with uh, Smith Wade. And this name probably sounds a little familiar with folks. Uh, at 165, I, I went with another wide receiver, um, Luke McCaffrey. Um, again, I, I just feel that we're going to need to to fill out the wide receiver positions. It's weird how just a couple of years ago, I, I felt we had 60 wide receivers on our team, and now it's like suddenly it's like, eh, we, we need somebody else. So... That's who I went with. Now, 191 went safety with Josh Proctor um, because uh, no other corners were available at that point. It was a lot of like defensive tackles and just you know a lot of running backs. And I did pick up a running back after him in Blake Watson, but um, I think we're good in the backfield. But it's probably good for us to pick up somebody who can eventually maybe. Uh, be that third uh, back because, I mean, you know, Austin Eckler, we don't know how long he'll be on the team. So, um, you know, I, I felt running back. Um, 222, I went with another wide receiver. Um, I just, I don't know. It was like this was the best one. Uh, this was, you know, I'm, I'm picking best player available at this point. Um you know, because obviously these guys are going to be more of the, your practice squad guys when you get closer to the end of, of the draft. And so I think it's, you know, like edge, I tend to treat wide receivers as you can't never have good enough, can't have enough wide receivers, right? And so I, I did that. And then uh, surprisingly enough, um, our um, uh, seventh round, I picked another quarterback. Uh, why did I do that? Well, I think that it's good to have some good young quarterbacks on the team. 
Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Jake Fromm. Um, I'm hoping that we continue to develop him because I thought he showed some some good things with us uh, last year in preseason. But, um, you know, with Austin Reed, I figured let's get another young quarterback. Um, Marcus Mariota is not going to stay on this team very long. Um, and I, I just want some young guys in there that we can develop along with, obviously, our starter. And so um, uh, that, that, my friends – is is the draft that I did um, now do I think that it is the best draft ever probably not but um, I think there were some good picks in there Brandon but I really liked your draft with uh, picking up uh, Tampa uh, guys like that uh, me and you see eye to eye on the Jordan Morgan pick as well and uh, so it, it just remains to be seen what's going to happen now. You know, talking about the real draft, a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke and mirrors going on. People, you know, talking about how uh, Jane Daniels' um, agent was upset because uh, the commanders brought in the all three top quarterbacks after Caleb Williams, of course. Um, and all at the same time, people laughed at the idea of the top golf thing and. And, uh, you know, I, I think people are just trying to read too much into something to try to find something to gripe about. Of course, uh, Mike Floor was definitely doing that. He was taking off and running with it. Um, but in your mind, Brandon, um, do you think any of this stuff is, is a sign that the commanders are going to wind up maybe going with Drake May instead of... Jaden Daniels, or is it just a bunch of fluff? Good question. And I'm going to say that we're going to be surprised what moves they make in the draft, to be honest with you. I think they, um, I think that Adam Peters has done a good job kind of with the smoke and mirrors, you know, not really playing, you know, showing his hand. I think that's definitely skillful on his part. And, and again, it's refreshing to have a GM who's strategizing as, as opposed to this is what we're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I, I already like what he's doing, but Man, we've already gone through so much just with the different camps as far as we were talking about before the show is how divisive it is as far as the camps when it comes to the quarterback pick. And I forget, man, this is an election year, so we got a heck of a year in front of us, man. But I think we're going to be surprised because, you know, looking at the number two. Now, when I get here's my thing with the whole agent and all that, I think it's so cornballish, man. I, it is so stupid. And really, it's just it, I know it's new age and it, you saw where you know, there's quarterbacks who dictated where he went before, but then, you know, those names had weight, you know, Eli Manning dictated where he went, stuff like that. And then I made my opinions known about Caleb Williams saying, you know, whether he wants to go to Chicago or not. And I'm, I'm kind of going to say the same thing when it comes to Jaden Daniels, just feel blessed you're going in the NFL. I mean, this whole, Oh, my agent, you know, uh, you haven't played one down in the NFL, man. Feel blessed to be able to make it. So I, I don't get into all that. I think it's just indicative of where we're at now as far as sports and society as a whole, where, you know, guys feel like they have power. And to me, I, I'm not going to read too much into it because I think that, you know, a lot of people looking at him at number two because just his intangibles. You know, he can throw the ball now. Is he the best thrower? You can argue Drake Mays a better thrower. You know, is he the most pro ready? I think a lot of people would say J.J. McCarthy. And that's why I said you, you never know what could happen because I think that all three quarterbacks, even if you look at Bo Nix and Penix, Megan Adams is in the mix, even though I see them as maybe later uh, first round, second round guys. Spencer Rattler is probably a third or fourth round, in my opinion. But all three could be the guy because I think they all have attributes that this new front office likes. You know, looking at Jaden Daniels, dual threat, I know that's something that Kingsbury, you know, he definitely likes. Um, if you look at Drake May, he's got the arm strength. He's got the build that he can take those hits. If you look at J.J. McCarthy, he's been in the pro system already under uh, – now a pro coach or where he was previously a pro coach and he's lost one game. You know, he showed that he can win big games. So I think we're going to be surprised and I, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. No matter who they get, somebody's going to be upset. And that's just the way things are the fan base right now. No matter who they get, somebody's going to be upset, but I'm happy with any of the three because for once we're going to go ahead and get our franchise quarterback. You know, I mean, we've had guys came in here and did a good job. You know, Heineke, a lot of heart, had his limitations, a lot of heart. You know, we've been, we've been through plenty of quarterbacks the last two to three years. Now's the time to get our franchise guys. So I think that that's one thing that a lot of us are 
not really we're into our camps, but it's not, you know, you should be supporting whoever it is because we're going to get a franchise quarterback, which is something we desperately need. And with all the intangibles with the other picks, we're going to be able to fulfill a lot of needs within the first three rounds. So we're going to solidify this team. So I think that's one thing that people are kind of forgetting about where the, you know, it's not about your guy it's about flexibility and the fact that we're going to be able to get a lot of guys who are going to be able to come in and provide good time on the field right away, especially in the first three rounds, in my opinion, because if you look at the first three rounds, these guys are going to be able to come in and, and play right away. So and that, that's why I'm excited. Um, I'm not going to get too much into the smoke and mirrors, but who knows? <laughs> because there's always some kind of drama, like you know, Top Golf, and they invited all the quarterbacks. And the AG one happy. It's just like, dude, <laughs> just be happy you're going to the NFL. And that's kind of where I'm at. You know, the smoke and mirrors. I get it to a certain degree, but then it's kind of like we're really arguing about Top Golf. Like, really? So that's where I'm at. I, I don't really, look. Jane Daniels is a guy that I like, but I do like Drake Bay too. And I do like J.J. McCarthy. So me personally, I know that me and you are kind of in the minority when it comes to this. But I just want one of the three, to be honest with you. I just want a quarterback. I just want a quarterback. Come in. Let's get to work. Let's get to training camp. And let's get the season rolling because that's where I'm at as a football fan. I just want a guy who's going to come in and be our franchise guy. I'm tired of rotating through different quarterbacks. I want a guy who's going to be here 10-plus years. If it's Drake May, cool. If it's Jane Daniels, awesome. If it's J.J. McCarthy, got you. But I, that's where I'm at. I'm so tired of this, the, the bickering, man. So, you know, let's go get our quarterback. That's where I'm at, Rick. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, you know, every time that I start to uh, kind of wrap my head around, okay, I think this is the guy that we're going to pick. Uh, and I feel comfortable and I feel good with saying, yeah, we're going to roll with this guy. I feel like we're going to draft this guy and I'm happy with it. And then all of a sudden I see another article um, – you know about the the other quarterback and i'm like mm, they got some good ideas with that too so maybe maybe i'm gonna pump my brakes on this for a little bit and um, i feel good about this other guy as well i mean i guess it would have been different if i really paid attention to a lot of college football this past year which unfortunately i did not and so i think because of that i didn't really form my opinion and to be honest with you i would dare to say that the large majority of fans out there didn't pay attention to college football much either and so they just start to form their opinion by going out and looking at highlights and you know they're like oh no this is the guy and i'm like you could go back and look at highlights and uh just you know be astounded by um uh, you know zach wilson probably a few years ago i mean uh, you know he probably would have looked like the the second coming of um uh, you know joe montana or tom brady you can't really go by that. You know, you have to really study uh, the film. And that's the other thing is when, you know, people talk about, oh, I've seen his film. I'm like, so you've actually seen the film that the team has that they go over and break down stuff because I doubt that you have access to that. You know, now you probably had the, the, the game record it. Um, and that's a little bit better, but that's still not like watching game film. So it kind of makes me laugh when, you know, people talk about, well, I've seen his game film. Like, no, nah, you haven't. You know, the only people that's seen his game film uh, film would be, um, you know, the, the uh, NFL front office guys like Adam Peters, who's studying all this, uh, Dan Quinn, and then, of course, uh, his school. So that being said, and, and also I'll, I'll just add this to, uh, there will be a video coming out, uh, and it it almost touched a little political, um, but um, I, I was getting a little preachy. I was trying not to, um, and as soon as it gets approved, I will I will release it. Hopefully, it's going to get approved before draft night. But um, it was just something I had to get off my chest when it comes to you know these camps and uh, you know fans being in one camp or the other and not always for very good reasons for reasons other than football and so i, I just felt like it was something that needed to be talked about um, but you know other than that um truly honestly um i am a fan of either one of these quarterbacks uh, that the commanders are going to pick i'm just excited to the fact that um, I feel like we're going to have a really good draft. We're going to bring in a lot of really good players, and 
Um, you know, certainly I'm going to be very relieved if we get a good solid left tackle. I mean, that's honestly out of anything. Yeah. That's like a one B for me, uh, with the quarterback being one a, um, after that to me, it's, it's kind of gravy. Uh, it's like, you know, let's just, you know, fill, fill out the rest of the, the draft with best play, you know, uh, best player available, but you know, at, on top of hoping that we do land some areas of need, but yeah, I, you know, overall, I just, um, it, it's crazy. Uh, and as someone put it before, this is the season of lying. So you can't believe anything that goes, goes on or, or is being said. You just have to, uh, stick with the idea. All of us don't, nobody, none of us. And I don't even think that Adam Peters at this point knows who he's going to draft. He said he would know by the beginning of the week. Um, but he said, you know, we have time. We don't have to make that decision until we're actually on the clock. And uh, that tells me that even though that he went out and he said, Brandon, he said this, uh, that he feels good about probably staying at number two. But of course he's going to feel good about staying at number two. But that isn't to say that that's 100% set in stone that they're not, you know, drafting or or trading down they could if there is a call that comes in right before they go on and they're like look this is we can't pass this up we're still going to be able to you know draft a quarterback and now we can get all these other positions filled in high rounds um i think certainly they would do that um i mean that that's just me i know a lot of people will feel like that would be the the biggest mistake that Adam Peters has ever done. And I'm like, you don't even know how the, that these guys are going to play once they get into the league. So you can't really say it's a mistake just yet, you know? Um, but I, I tell you anything else that we should be looking out for Brandon, as far as the, the draft, I mean, I, I'm so done talking about the draft. I just wanted to hurry up and get here. Uh, is there anything else you got with this? Uh, no, sir, man. Like I said, um, I, I'm i excited for the draft, but I kind of want the draft to hear up and come, man, because I want to, you know, I want the organization and the fan base to get their mind ready for training camp and for the season. You know, it's just so I, I didn't realize it's going to be so divisive as far as quarterback, man. I just didn't realize that. And I, you know, I, I was hoping that this fan base would be somewhat happy because we're in this position, you know, instead of being, you know, at each other's throat, we're in a position where we can finally we have choices as opposed to, you know, if you look at the year we got RG3, it was RG3 and, and Andrew Luck. That was it. I mean, I got to take a look at the draft again, but those were the hot, that you know, the, the main guys. So we have an option, you know, we have the opportunity to go get a guy. So it's um, it's just crazy <laughs> as far as the fan base and that. But no, nah, I, I, I'm ready for the draft. I am, but let's get this thing out of the way, man, so we can focus on training camp and, get, you know, getting ready for the seasons because, man, I need some football in my life, man. So... <laughs> And folks, uh, speaking of the draft, um, Brandon and I are thinking about, I think we might do it, might be able to do it. We're going to try to go live on draft night. Um, so we're going to be with you right when they call out that the commanders are trading down. <laughs> Ooh, that's touchy. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're, we're going to try to at least be with you uh, through maybe the first round. Um, possibly, who knows? We may not be here that long. We may be here just long enough to, you know, pick that number two and then talk about that. But um, we're definitely uh, we want to be a part of draft night. So you want to tune in with us? Don't worry, you can still watch the draft. Uh, you can watch us on the computer and watch the draft on the TV. So uh, just be with us Thursday night. Um, We'll uh, let you know a little bit later on when we actually go live, but we will definitely go live before we pick. So um, we will work that out and get that news back to you. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it for this uh, this podcast today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, you enjoyed our mock drafts. Uh, feel free to tear it apart all that you want to do in the comments below um let us know who who you're picking do you agree with these picks do you do you not uh let us know and uh with that said uh we will be seeing you later on folks just held to the washington commanders peace and we'll see you in the next one 